welcome to the wax station. We'll go over some wax safety, safety stuff in another video and during class. Uh, but I want to go straight from pulling my hand or my object out of the alginate over to the wax station. So if you're working with other people in the studio who are also doing alginate, talk to each other because this is time sensitive. Alginate has, uh, uh, it starts to degrade pretty rapidly and you'll notice it degrading because it starts to weep water, which is one of the reasons why um, it's really a one use material. So I yank my object, be it my hand or an object to actually get out of the alginate. And then I come straight over to the wax station. So you can see I have my alginate in my bucket and I've also grabbed a little silicone mold as a trough because it'll make it easier for me if my um, if I if I make any spills to clean up. And it also just allows me to be messier, knowing that I'm just not making a, a huge cleanup situation for myself afterwards. So basically what I'm gonna do now is that I'm going to slosh a bunch of wax in here and then spin my mold around, spilling some out on purpose. So I'm making sure that I'm coating the whole thing fast and in one go. So it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna grab the big ladle I'm gonna pull out, I'm gonna let it sort of drip off so I'm not spilling too much. And then I'm gonna dump a bunch of wax in. And then carefully spin it around. This wax is hot and you do not wanna get it on your hands. So spin and pour and spin and pour aiming down and I'm gonna give it a spin in the other direction. Great. So now I'm gonna move that away cause it's just gonna get cool and I can peel it off and put it back in the wax bucket. So that's just going off to the side and I'm gonna grab one more and pop my mold back in here again to catch any spills. So I've coated the outside. I feel pretty good that the whole surface is coated. I'm not gonna have a lot, of, um, a lot of chill lines. And also any detail that I was going to get was happened right then. So I can sort of relax a little bit for time, but I'm still time pressured and I wanna fill it with wax now. So I'm gonna get another ladle full of wax and slop it in, filling it up as close as I can get to the top. But I'm gonna to top it off one more time because I'm still on this second pour, going to move it around a bit. The shape of my hand looked like that when I was in the mold. So there's the possibility that this area right here isn't going to want to fill because um, that's asking the wax to go against gravity, right? It's gonna to wanna to fill like this. And so potentially it'll fill to here and then not fill here. So basically what I wanna do, give it a little bounce, give it a little spin, maybe slosh it out a little bit more and sort of ask it to move all the way up. I'm not seeing any big glugs of bubbles, so that might be a good sign and then I'll just top it off the rest of the way. If I'm out of my, <laughs> if I'm out of my, um, my catch-all bucket, I'm just gonna pour carefully. And if I make a mess, I'll clean it up. Filling it all the way to the top. Beautiful. So now I've got all of my wax filled and I'm just going to carefully pour off just a little bit so I don't spill. And now I can move this somewhere safe for the wax to cool. And I'm gonna let the wax cool for probably minimum an hour, but mostly overnight. <laughs>
And the second one, we're going to make a mold of a small object. Um, there are some parameters for the objects that you choose. What you want to choose is um, something that isn't precious to you. So if something bad happens to it, it's not the end of the world. Alginate is a very safe material, but, um, but if it's really important to you, maybe it's not a great thing to submerge in alginate. Um, the other thing is that you want to choose something that has a lot of surface detail, that a smooth stone isn't going to look great uh, in wax because you're just going to have a stone shaped piece of wax. So instead what you want to focus on is, um, is choosing things with very specific detail like the ridges on this cup and especially for me I'm really interested in also like the mm -hmm. cool um, manufacturer's symbols on the bottom. I think that the translation from um, manufactured object into handmade object is curious so all of those details are things that I look out for. Uh, other things that are parameters for making alginate molds out of objects, the object can't be porous. So uh, a teddy bear is maybe not a great thing to take a m alginate mold off of. I think all the hair is just gonna get pulled out. A sponge is a terrible object because it's just gonna <laughs> inhale all the alginate and then you're gonna yank it out and instead you're gonna have like a gaping wound instead of a sponge shaped hole. Um, we'll talk more about your individual objects and troubleshoot together, but those are good uh, parameters. The other parameter that we're going to talk about is size. Similar to, um, similar to the conversation we had in the, uh, in the body casting video, you want to keep your scale down, both for um, conserving the amount of material alginate that you're going to use but also the amount of time that we have to fire these objects in the kiln. So I would say a, a good rule of scale is kind of no bigger than your hand height-wise and no bigger than your fist width-wise. And again, these are uh, parameters, but they are not sort of firm fences. So we'll talk more individually about the things that you're thinking about. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so what we're going to do that is different with the object alginate casting versus the body casting is that we're going to affix the object into a vessel rather than plunge our body into the vessel. Um, and what this means is that we're going to have to remove the alginate from the vessel to, uh, to get the wax in because wherever the object affixes into the vessel, that's going to be the opening for the wax and will also obviously not capture any detail. So think about that as you're choosing which part of your object to affix. Now, the cup that we're gonna do, has a pretty natural sort of obvious affixing point, but if for whatever reason I wanted to affix the cup like this, I would have to then fill the cup with something like plastilina clay so the alginate didn't flow in because otherwise then you're just casting the shell of the object and that's not good for the processes that we're doing. So for this, I'm going to use these, this one quart container. When you affix the cup into the container, it's, it's you know, it, it's gonna, I, I'm only gonna fill the alginate to about here. So when I measure my alginate in a minute, I'm not gonna fill it to the top the way we did last time. I'm gonna choose a mark on the side of the cup, just as a heads up. So if I just place the cup in here and don't affix it to the bottom, when I pour the alginate in, the cup is going to flow, it's going to float up and it's going to be a huge disaster. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use this oil clay, this plastilina, and I'm going to, um, what I think I'm actually going to do first is line the bottom of the mold, or sorry, of the cup, the container, that's a lot of words, but I feel like we all got there in the end, with the plastilina. So I'm going to sort of smush it out into a little patty that's, you know, more or less the size and shape of the bottom of my vessel. And then I'm gonna push it in and it doesn't have to be pretty, which is good because it's not. <laughs> and then I can come over here and Madeline can angle down in a second, no rush, but just to see what this looks like when I'm all done. 
And I'm showing this to you like this, but there are a lot of methods to do. This is sort of a, tr a troubleshooting job, not a, not a rule of how to do this, if that makes sense. So you can see I've made this little patty here. And then I'm going to take another little bit of plastilina and I'm gonna roll it between my hands. <clears throat> and I'm gonna make a little, a little clay snake. Long and thin, and the length is gonna be determined by the diameter of the cup top. And I can do this in more than one piece, obviously. I'll make it a little longer than I need to. So now I'm gonna take my cup and I'm gonna press it in to this little bed that I've made. And the cup is super flimsy. It's just like a shitty cheap cup. I cursed. <laughs> I do that. Sorry. You'll, you guys will be okay though, right? Yeah. I guess Madeline could edit that out, but she's probably <laughs> not going to, and that's fine. So I'm, I'm working hard to sort of embed this and not to deform my cup too much. My, fing my hands are pretty little, so I can do this okay. But if you're finding that the vessel that you chose is uh, too, too narrow for your fingers, you can always use the, um, the wax working tools that you have in your toolbox. And I think I'll choose one that has like a little bit of a bent spade shape so I can get in there and just sort of nudge down. And basically what I'm doing is just affixing. And so now that's lightly affixed, but it's full of air. And it means that when I pull the, when I pour the alginate in, um, the cup is going to want to rise out. So I'm gonna take my little snake and I'm gonna drop it in there. And then I'm gonna use that same tool and I can change tools if the one that I chose doesn't feel right, but let's try it. Actually, it doesn't feel right. So I'm gonna try the slightly less bent, slightly wider spade. And I'm just gonna sort of nudge it down and over. Using it like a, like a little bit of glue. The snake, that is. If you are using a disposable container, not one of these reusable quart containers, but if you're using like a solo cup or something that is um, that is meant to be used once and thrown away, then a good way to do this is to pour a little wax on the bottom and then embed your object in wax because that's faster. All right, so that was um, about a, I would say six to eight minute break, um, but I do this a lot, so I'm pretty fast. Take your time to make sure that it's well affixed and that the, um, the place where the clay meets your object is pretty tidy. It doesn't really matter what the rest of the clay looks like, but if, it like, if your clay crawls up onto your object, um, that detail will be captured and that will become part of your wax. So you've either sort of made a messy wax and that's what you get, or then you're gonna have to spend some time tidying up your wax. Uh, the rule of thumb for making molds is that do all the labor now. So then the wax and then theoretically the glass has less work to do. So it's a fixed, I'm pretty, I'm, pretty certain that the alginate is gonna, um, is gonna flow around it without the object wanting to float. The last thing I'm going to do before I move over to the mixing station is, um, is spray a little bit of this Smooth On Universal Mold Release. I feel like I'm in an infomercial right now. Smooth On Universal Mold Release. The only mold release that is approved by Susie Peck, this and, and Vaseline, frankly. Um, I'm just showing it to you over here, but I'm realizing that we should move it over to the mixing table and turn on the updraft. Um, it is non-toxic, but it's still an aerosolized spray, so I don't generally like to get a lung full of it. Uh, so let's pause the video and I'll meet you over by the stage.